the process of learning is really important and keeping an open mind to all different types of technologies and techniques I think are very very important I think if you're learning or if you're just doing this professionally anyways if you're not constantly reevaluating your techniques reevaluating your approach and trying to change it so that it is coming up with new sounds for yourself whatever that means like then you're not trying hard enough like you have to do it on a regular basis reinvent your your approach because there always going to be something really great that's going to happen out of that you're going to come up with new ideas My name's Colin Dupuy, I make records. My mom was very much into music. Peter Frampton, Hendrix, um, Parliament Funkadelic were on regular rotation. Moody Blues, I remember that a lot. Uh, the Beatles, of course, and I'd, she'd give me pots and pans and spoons and I'd bang on them when I was eight months, so it started then. I think Hendri Hendrix, our experience and Axis Bowl's Love were like my first mental headphone diving in records. My mom was friends with Glenn Brown. who's Glenn Brown Productions in Lansing, Michigan. He still operates an amazing studio. He's an amazing engineer, super talented person. He was working at a place called Lansing Sound at the time. And so she took me in there when I was five years old and it was like buttons and knobs everywhere. And I just, I remember it being like instantly in my head that technology was going to be part of like my future in some way. Eventually met up with my friend Norm Drews, who is Atomic Instruments Company. Uh, and we were in a band for years together and it was him and his involvement of technology and just interest of building speakers and doing stuff that re reignited my quest for recording. And we lived together and we had home recording setups that went anywhere from having four track cassettes to having uh, early DAW computer type stuff like on SoundForge, on a PC, like cheap stuff. One of those Tascam 388 things, eight track. I had one of those for a while. Like, and then we moved into a two inch 24 track and it just kind of spawned from there and we ran a studio together. I was wiring studios a lot earlier in my career because it was a means to A, get my foot in the door, B, to make some money. And so I'm like, well, if I at least can be making money working within a studio environment instead of working in some office someplace and then having to figure out how to fit myself in the studio. If you're already in a studio and you're wiring it, then you're there to be like, oh yeah, I can do this. And just, it opens up doors. I think if you're coming up and you want to get into a studio, be available beyond just what you learned at some recording school. Fast forward some through all of that, working at like FBT studios and doing some work at Effigy and then working for Call Craig for five years. I got this call from Dan Auerbach on the phone because he got um, my number from Tim Mead, who's one of the head technicians over at Vintage King. And Tim was like, hey, this guy knows how to wire studios. Like, So Dan called me on the phone and I, he was like, I need someone to wire up my studio in Akron. So I went over there and wired his studio up in Akron and then he started piling gear on me to, to fix. And I got these different pieces of gear going and built that Alltech custom tube console like for him with three Alltech mixers and put echo sends on the outputs, like pre-fader echo sends on each one, feeding to a master mix bus. Um, so that's what kind of got me into Nashville because Dan was like, this guy will do this for me. And so he called me on the phone after I'd already been doing a bunch of work for him and was like, I'm moving to Nashville, you can help me open a studio. And then before you know it, we're making the first Black Keys record and then we're making a Dr. John record. The Dr. John record went together really easy. It was, you cut it onto an MM1200, two inch 24 track, dumped into Pro Tools, then everything else was finished up after that. Um, and we uh, did the mixing out onto the Quad 8 console that was bypassing the input transformers, feeding right into the faders, which fed into the EQs, into the mix bus, mostly live on the floor, nine musicians at a time. And so the sound of that record is lots of bleed. If you listen to, <laughs> you listen to any one of the microphones, soloed it's like there's everything else on it <laughs> in some way shape or form and i think that's a really important way of making records that we need to continue to do and not be afraid of i think it's important to have uh, an opinion and have have a direction you want to go when you're when you're thinking about doing art you have you have to have something to go to you, you can't just arbitrarily expect things to appear in your mind like you have to work at it you have to go and you know 
when people are like, I'm not feeling inspired, we'll just start playing then. Just keep doing that until you feel inspired and then we'll capture it. 